joining us today. Um, my name is Megan Burke and uh, my uh, colleague Andrea Britton and I are pleased to present to you our uh, presentation on collection archaeology, uncovering and cleaning up legacy metadata after a migration to Alma. So just Many of you were with WRLC for all or some of the history of Voyager and Alma, but as a refresher, WRLC migrated to Voyager from NOTIS in 1997. Forgive me if I have the wrong date for the NOTIS implementation, but um, this was the earliest I could find record of it in WRLC's uh, documentation. Um, by the time our Alma migration rolled around in 2018, Voyager was officially able to drink and had seen its fair share of battle wounds, including format changes, updates to mark, and years and years of hacks to get a system made for physical resources to work for electronic ones too. Voyager was also a time capsule in that deleting things like purchase orders and location codes was either very difficult or impossible. Marymount had lots of suppressed records that could have been deleted from years of being unable to delete items with POs attached, we had empty location codes. Um, and after we migrated, we found that Alma and Voyager data didn't always get along, meaning we had to hack or completely overhaul the migrated data in Alma to get our old Voyager data to work. Um, this was particularly true with prediction patterns and POLs with e-resources that had been on print resources. It also exposed our broken pottery, so to speak. We found out what worked in Voyager sometimes translated to a mess in Alma. Beginning the collection archeology span process, the Voyager migration process left behind many artifacts that needed to be uncovered. Some like suppressed records we expected, although the scale and variety surprised us. There were more than we expected, and some sets were completely unexpected. We also had put journals, put all journal formats, mixing the physical and electronic on one record, one of many Voyager hacks, and then separated them again, the P2E, pro P2E process. This meant that we had purchase orders for e-journals that migrated as physical. We were not sure of the scale of this problem until after the migration. Alma also doesn't like two identical holdings on one bib. This happened fairly frequently in Voyager when our practice dictated that a replacement item would be given new holdings record and an old holdings record would be suppressed. Where this occurred in Voyager, the resulting Alma migration outcome was to suppress both records. We also learned that overall, likely because it was less complex, serial solutions data migrated much more accurately than the Voyager data. We had to learn Alma's rules and quirks, also known as Alma logic, to figure out not only why we were encountering certain issues, but to discover the patterns that would lead us to more Voyager remnants and artifacts that interfered with our accurate statistics. So understanding Alma logic. Alma logic and Voyager logic are not terribly dissimilar. They are from the same company after all, but there are some major differences. For example, in Voyager, you could have, though whether you should have is a different argument, an item with one permanent location and a holding with a different permanent location. In Alma, that is not possible. The differences in logic and behaviors force a new, a new framework on us, although we couldn't abandon Voyager completely in the short term. The practical outcomes of these differences included the previously mentioned holdings. Uh, the new rule was that holdings with the same location will not be allowed to have two different holdings records. Um, we were now able to move POLs or orders that may have been added erroneously. Um, and uh, also cancel, delete, or close them with relative ease. Um, what we found was also that what can be done can often be undone, unlike in Voyager where one mistake um, often meant they had to recreate everything. Um, there was no history. And while we found that uncovering issues meant going through records one by one, at least we were able to find them and fix them. Um, and Marymount didn't have super robust reporting capabilities in Voyager that very easily. So a lot of things just went unnoticed. Conducting an archeological dig, sort of uncovering these artifacts. So some of the oddities um, we encountered were holdings without items. Um, we had hold, you know, multiple holdings, with items, but we also had holdings that had no items. Um, the much mentioned suppressed bib records and abandoned locations. We started to see patterns and used Alma tools like advanced search and analytics to form lists and reports of resources to be reviewed, checked, 
and possibly correct it. Using these reports, we were able to sort out the oddities and resolve any data inconsistencies. The print POLs and an e-journal received a new POL. An active bib record with all its holdings suppressed was corrected by unsuppressing or deleting as appropriate. The locations were usually emptied of most records, but we found a few interesting residents to evict. And of course, we found so many, so, so many suppressed records. Conducting an archeological dig. Um, Using analytics, um, this is an example of an analytics analysis that finds records with both print and electronic holdings attached. Uh, it was a hack in Voyager that we combined all the inventory on the same record, and we thought we had cleaned up everything in the P2E process, but post-migration uh, cleanup revealed our P2E process was not nearly as thorough as we thought. And I will say we clean things up for the P2E process. So we had things on one record and made sure they were separate, but it didn't always work. Additionally, um, we started a large journal weeding project um, before migration and we resumed it shortly after. We realized that nearly all the print journals were suppressed in Primo. Um, and we also uncovered a number of periodicals holdings without items, which we were suspected were for withdrawn journals. Um, and we were able to use an analytics report to target these records for cleanup. Here an analytics report allowed us to get the summary holdings, including notes, and we searched on the keyword withdrawn. It was a regular treasure trove of variations of ways to say something was withdrawn, but it proved really useful when cleaning up periodicals because we were able to really pinpoint which ones had that note and which ones were withdrawn versus which ones may have uh, had other uh, information in the holdings record that told us where the journal went. Advanced search is a great tool. Um, you can either use it as a complement to analytics or sometimes on its own, it's enough. It's powerful enough to get your list going. And while it generally does not allow that granularity, um, you can't see the summary holdings or local notes that are in um, analytics, it can be used to uncover trends and create sets of problematic records. The sets can then be exported to Excel and used as working documents or used to run jobs. This particular search generates a list of all the records in a particular location without items, our missing items problem, our missing, yeah, missing items. So we touched on how patterns led us to new discoveries, but you may be wondering more about what we uncovered. Well, early into migration, we did a search to see what was in every location we migrated. Things that could easily be cleaned up or deleted along with the location code. Because remember, we couldn't delete location codes in Voyager. The oddest one we found was MU Atlas, which said we had somehow 86 reference atlases. And thus far, we have been able to locate one. It's still a mystery. And since we couldn't easily delete anything with PO attached in Voyager, we had lots of suppressed records of items we hadn't had for years, um, which we happily created sets and deleted using jobs. Um, we also had a bunch of serials that had been sent to the shared collections facility, but were marked as held at the library, which we were able to figure out was incorrect. Um, so many records using outdated cataloging rules, lots of ACR2 records um, or incorrectly cataloged things. Um, yeah, it, was, it was definitely a, a, dis a discovery uh, experience. We also, um, because of the rule that you can only have one holding in a particular location code, if one holding, one record with a location code was suppressed, the migration process also suppressed the second record, presumably as a just-in-case strategy. So we had scores of those records for our serials that we had to clean up. We also had many serial records that were marked as held at Marymount, but had in fact been sent to the WRLC, as Megan mentioned. This may have been the result of an items holding location mismatch or something else, it's hard to say. Nevertheless, we were given lists of them and just cleaned them up. We rebuilt the purchase order lines for all of our e-journals that had been using physical bid records. We moved a lot of order records. And we realized most of the financial information which we had chosen to migrate was probably not going to be looked at, but it also didn't really have a negative impact on anything we saw in Alma. We also saw a lot of remnants of past Voyager practices as Megan touched on earlier. There were some, some you could see the outlines of 
of sort of policies as you were going through some of the uh, some of the records and looking at them, which is sort of interesting. So how do we clean it up? Um, well, sorry, very gingerly. Sometimes we left it completely and started from scratch. Um, this was especially the case for serials prediction patterns. Um, in some cases, we were able to identify the problem, but we still had to clean it up record by record. Um, so this helped us, the reports helped us discover the patterns, but we couldn't always use the jobs function to correct some of them. We made use of the export to Excel feature in Alma and Alma Analytics to create spreadsheets in order to keep the mini update projects well documented and easy to pick up and work on in small chunks. Um, we rebuilt POLs for e resources that had been physical records in the Voyager system and had not made it into the P2E. Uh, mostly these were serials left over from when we combined them onto one record. Alma did not allow us to change the POL types from physical to electronics. So we had to manually recreate those. We made sets of everything and ran jobs whenever we could. There's so much more we can do with jobs and sets than in Voyager. Um, Andrea will discuss the sets and reports in more detail on the next slide. Um, we started with reports to uncover holdings and locations problems, but quickly included reports to uncover suppressed um, bibs and holdings, made sets and exported them to work off spreadsheets. We picked apart the set members, usually exported to Excel to find commonalities and patterns of migration related problems. For instance, if several items in a location were suppressed or contained multiple holdings, there was a good chance that there were more like it. And we also recreated orders when necessary um, because we couldn't find a good way to, uh, to move those in a way that actually worked. So these are some of a, a list of reports and sources that we use. Um, analytics reports that we liked were the item ID plus the non-public note. That can get you some really interesting variations. Um, and I would encourage you all to play in analytics. These are sort of just a, a base and everybody's holdings are a little bit different and their, their architecture of the way they set their things up is different. So you can definitely use this as a base to sort of build reports um, unique to your own situations, which everybody I'm sure has their, their stories about the migration and what turned up. Um, but there's a holdings with both physical and electronic inventory. There's a gross number of physical items, which was great when you were looking for at weird locations. Um, the advanced search was great for empty holdings. So physical titings that, titles that had no items, and then you could use the facets to sort of break out the material types. Um, physical titles and current location. Um, if you have some questions about what's in there, it's, it's great. You just kind of pull up the records and look, look at them and sort of dissect and try to figure out what's going on. The physical titles and temporary location um, were the location in question. Um, if you have a question about what is in there, it's always a great one to run. And then all of the, the, tag, the suppressed records, um, these, these are great for cleanup, especially while we're all working from home. The physical titles plus tags pressed, some have inventory, some don't. Um, those are the different sort of flavors of the suppressed records that we found. It wasn't just straight up suppressed. Lots of times there were sub reasons they were suppressed or the holdings were suppressed and the, the bib record wasn't. We saw all sorts of variations, but these are the, the reports we found to be the handiest to sort of get you started. So we used both the analytics and the advanced search to dissect and analyze these problem areas and then use the sets, as Megan explained, um, to derive working spreadsheets. This allowed us to keep records, which is also nice if you need to go back and remember what you did or um, keep a log of your progress. Um, we do have the advantage of a relatively small collection and a tightly knit group of people, which helps with some of the communication issues and it was easy for us to sort of all be aware of what each other was doing and not stepping on toes, which made it a little bit easier for us. Other people might have more challenges with larger collections. Um, also remember that Alma is incredibly forgiving. So you can make mistakes and it's pretty easy to correct them. Just take some effort and maybe an analytics report or two because nothing ever dies in analytics, remember that. We always um, recommend if you are testing to test out a, a couple of records before you go into any large scale um, job running or anything like that, just to make sure it does what you think it's going to do. Because it can be a little bit tricky sometimes to get the right um, order and the right job to run.
So um, we have plenty of time for questions if you have any. Um, or if you would like just to go back to review anything, um, that's also happy to do that. Alexandra, that's great um, you know, that you recently discovered you can change your print POL type to other service and then other service to electronic. Yeah, I mean, it's still faster than recreating it. But it can only go from print to electronic. Great question, Debbie. Um, Andrea, do you want to talk about that? That information should be in the holdings record. Yeah, it's it's typically in there. Um, we we have a backup spreadsheet, but now I, I think it's mostly in the actual. Well, we have the financial data too, so we have it all. It's all in Alma. I'm a little bit surprised about how well you can rebuild and and correct things in Alma. Yeah, we never truly deleted any of our periodical subscriptions unless they were deleted before the Voyager migration. I think all of those go into the shared um, serials uh, collection at WRLC. So we have documentation of which issues that we subscribe to and when. <laughs> oh, Linda, we're still going. Yeah. Finding new stuff every day. We have to find those 86 atlases before we can delete them all. Or at least some documentation about where they really went. I sus they were, most of them were ADC maps and I suspect they were probably withdrawn, but we can't figure that out for sure. Um, when we still had Voyager active, we were in and out of Voyager a lot, but since we have gone from not actually having the modules anymore, I don't think we've actually had to go back into Voyager for anything. Um, we had some pretty robust spreadsheets um, that we were kind of able to go into and a lot of that information was um, accessible there too. And lots of times when we were going back into Voyager was to rebuild some of those holdings for the periodicals. And then I discovered that you can actually pull that information um, out of analytics. There's a line for the 852 field and that will give you what your holdings were at least in Voyager. So that was helpful. Oh, that's a great question. Huh. I think like I would have started earlier um, yeah. because I think it took us a while to sort of get our sea legs with Alma, but it might have been good to start from almost immediately after migration, but our heads were all swimming, I guess, with new stuff to do. I would not have done the P2E process <laughs> <laughs> at all. Um, I just would have migrated everything from Zero Solutions and um, recreated all of the orders for our 
print periodicals uh, or our electronic periodicals because um, I think it was the same amount of work. It was just more confusing. Yeah. yeah again, it helps. We don't have some of the, you know, our holdings are fairly small compared to some. So it would have been completely plausible to actually rebuild. Um, we haven't told Ex Libris this, um, and I think part of the reason that I say I wouldn't have done P2E, I may have done it for ebooks, but not for e-journals, is because, um, because we had that one record policy um, for a bit in the WLC, which was putting all of our holdings, orders, everything on one bibliographic record for all of our serials, um, so that when we separated them, uh, rather than having uh, the PO attached to the record that um, was electronic, we had it attached to the print. And that really made things difficult when we migrated because we had all these sort of records with two orders and <coughs> some of them were print. So, um, it may have been a unique situation for us, um, but I did find the P2E process to be frustrating at a number of levels. So. Um, I'm not sure if Ex Libris will continue to uh, to do PTE after after a while. Yeah, I would be interested to know if anyone else experienced similar difficulties. Yeah. Um, I think the ability to um, run jobs on uh, sets of records ourselves, where before we were, at least at Marymount, kind of beholden on WRLC, which, you know, they always did a great job, but it was like an extra barrier to getting things done. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, also, just the fact that, you know, I thought originally that I would hate that analytics didn't delete anything, but it's turned out to be a real savior um, <laughs> because you can go back and get legacy data on almost everything, which is really um, in some cases has been just like, how did we do this? I don't remember. And then you can go back and see. So yeah, I think sort of flexibility, a little bit more power to the individual institutions. Um, and uh, also export to Excel. Like that's one of my favorite features. Oh, absolutely. Export it to Google Sheets, but can't have everything. <laughs> it makes it so much easier to sort of parcel small bits out if you need to give it to different people too. The export to Excel has, has been great. And the customization available is also pretty good. So if you don't want the full report, you can isolate certain components and just export it, which has really helped um, in terms of creating actually useful reports. I also want to say if anybody wants to email us, we're happy to answer sort of, you know, sometimes these questions can get super complicated based on, you know, your own unique way things are set up. So we're happy to try to help. If you'd rather email, um, that is an option too. Yeah. Or if you have super great reports and yeah. you're on one of the <gasps> e resources, base camps or cataloging base camps, share those. Always interested in seeing how other people are cleaning things up.
Are there any other questions? Okay. Um, well, if there are no more questions, I think we can probably wrap it up. Um, thank you all for coming. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>